Welcome to the Tough Decisions Network for Entrepreneurs. I'm Dan Hanford, and my wife, Danae, and I interview successful people sharing stories behind tough decisions that they've had to make along their journey as an entrepreneur. On the podcast with us today is Nisar Ahmed. He is the founder and current managing editor of CareerMetis.com, which is an online publication dedicated to helping job seekers and freelancers with career advice. He's also the host of the Career Metis podcast. So Nisar, thank you very much for being with us. We're looking forward to chatting with you today. Thank you, Dan and Dene, for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, it's an honor to be part of the program. Well, I want you to start us off by kind of giving us a little bit more about your background as an entrepreneur and where your current focus is right now. Sure. So my background as an entrepreneur, I would say ever since I was 18 or two, 19, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I got inspired by reading a book about a particular character in the book. And I said to myself, that's what I want to be. So in my 20s, early 20s, most of 20s, I've been reading about and how to become the path I am right now, it was totally accidental. So as I mentioned, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I did not know how. And um, in the last few years, I decided to do an experiment. I was testing a few things out. I wanted to be part of the online business. I wanted to start something on the web. And as I was experimenting and trying it out, I realized that this could actually be a real business. So I had the intention. I did not have the path. And when I started careermetis.com, I was just curious. I wanted to test it out. I wanted to see if it will even work. Then I started applying myself and started doing new things and testing and learning. Lots of trial and error. Then I realized, you know, after I started getting, trying to grow it into a community, I realized this could be actually actual business. So I know you're based in Toronto, Canada, correct? Yes. Is this product on this website, this service, is it only for Canada or is it for the United States as well? Yeah, good question. So the second question, it is global. So uh, okay. uh, let me explain a little bit more about the service. It is an online publication. Think of it as like my goal is to make it the Huffington Post for careers. People go to Huffington Post for liberal news. My goal is in the next few years or many years, careermedis.com becomes that site where people go to when they want job search advice or when someone wants to hire someone, they are stuck, they go there for hiring advice. So it is a publication. It's a service. You can, you can consider it as a service and the audience is worldwide. So I'm sure that you've had several different tough decisions that you've had to make in you know, developing this, this entity and this website. I want you to talk to us about a tough decision that you had to make. And I like to call it the sore thumb tough decision. It kind of really sticks out in your mind. You'll never forget it. It'll be a story that you'll tell your children as you get older about a decision that you made that really didn't go so well, but you learned a lot of lessons through that. So do you have one of those tough decisions that you can go through with us today? Yeah, absolutely. And that tough decision has more to do with what happened before, before careermetis.com. So when I was in my late 20s, things were actually going very well. I had a strong career in sales. I was making a good income. I had just bought my first property. And I thought, you know, in the next 10 years, that's what I will do. I'll become a real estate investor slash landlord. And, um, I got to a point where I thought I was untouchable. I had a few series of successes. So I decided to stack my risks. I started to take one risk after another to the point where I bit off more than I can chew. Meaning I had just got a property and within a year, I decided to quit my job and start a business, a franchise. So you can imagine the amount of financial stress one can go through. I did not think it through at that time because, you know, your emotions get to you. I realized I was not invincible. <laughs> then I become, was this a real estate franchise? No, it was totally different. Uh, the real oh, okay. property was a rental property, but the franchise was a sales consulting franchise and I bought into it. And I would say it has more to do with my timing and me not knowing how long it'll take to scale a business. As a result of that, long story short, I had to go through a lot of difficulties to the point where I had to sell the property, I had to minimize downsize. And that's when I realized, you know what? I also went through a period of two to three years where no matter what I tried, I could not get anything to stick. That's when I realized, you know what? 
the business decision at that time was a bad one. The timing was bad. I was not ready. I was just my emotions. I actually did not, was not an entrepreneur. I wasn't a war entrepreneur at that time. I just wanted mm-hmm. to be a business owner and that failed. So that tough decision really, really hurt me. And I'll always remember that because it took me three years to really get over the, once you go through something like that, you get something called financial PTSD. You're all <laughs> oh, yes. And it is not easy. Even though the decision you make, it's only a few months, but the impact of that could last years. It took me three years to get over that. And finally, once I started getting back on track, more successes to my life, I could get away from that shadow of that failure. So that tough decision really, really hurt. But you know what? I would not be here. I don't think you and I would be having a conversation if that did not happen. So that was the one tough decision that went bad. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the biggest thing there is, is understanding that, you know, you took steps to move towards what you were wanting and what you were seeking, even though it wasn't the right thing at that time, it still moved you to that direction. And like you said, it got you to where you are today, because I think so many times as, you know, what you would call entrepreneurs, you know, I'm not a entrepreneur right now, but as we are beginning in that entrepreneurial state, you know, being in that entrepreneur state, a lot of times making that first leap and that first step into that first business and that first deal, if you will, a lot of times is what can hold a lot of people back. It's that fear of starting. And sometimes you just have to start. And like in your situation, it didn't turn out so well, but it also got you to go, got you to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. And just wanted to add one more uh, quick thing to that is there was a period of a lot of self-reflection and I realized sometimes it is good to start over. And uh, that gives you clarity as well. And one thing I wanted to say is maybe all of us have a destination, but the vehicle can change. Maybe you're trying to get to from point A to point B. I knew where I wanted to be, but the first vehicle I took didn't turn out to be good. So I decided to, to take another vehicle. That's the way I see it. The path could change, but the destination is always something that you never lose sight of. Yes. So let's shift here a little bit and talk about a tough decision that you made that had a really good and positive outcome and some of the lessons you learned through that one. Yeah, absolutely. So in 2015 is when I decided to focus on careermedis.com and I still decided to do that part-time at that point. I used to have a full-time career in software sales. I used to come in the evenings and weekends. At that time, I said, okay, I want to do this. And this time I'm not going to invest money. I won't take the financial risks, but I'm willing to put in the time. So I said, how do I do this? And I came up with an idea is in order to get exposure, I need to start writing. So I'll write 10 articles in the next 10 weeks, which is a good cadence or a good uh, tempo. Actually, it's one one article a week. It's very reasonable, totally attainable. At that point, what happened, I, I had just read and listened to a book called The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone, and that really changed Grant really changed the way I thought about goal setting. Essentially, the 10X rule says that if your goal is, let's say your goal is to achieve something, multiply that goal by 10 10 times. So let's say your goal is to, like in my case, my goal was to write 10 articles. He said, make it 100 because what will happen is even if you don't hit the 100, you will achieve more than what your initial goal was. So that inspired me, that changed me. I said, I'll write in the next four months, I'll write 100 articles. It actually took me seven to eight months, but by the time I was done, things shifted. By the end of the eighth month, I started getting inquiries from individuals from Australia, the US, saying that they like the content, they like to be part of it. And in total, total honesty, at that time, I did not know that guest blogging or guest contribution was a thing. I was actually surprised by that. And I realized it's actually a thing. A lot of businesses have grown that way. So after I got that, success or luck at that point, I decided to shift gear. I switched from me writing articles to becoming the guy who grows this community of contributors, manages them, editing and and publishing. So since then, I've shifted from an individual blogger to actual publishing. And now I want to switch gears to a full-blown business. So that was really hard. I mean, I know it sounds good when you hear it. Okay, 100 articles, that sounds awesome. But imagine writing, even trying to sit down and write one article is a pain. It's a very painful process. And imagine trying to do that to you every weekend, you know, not going out on a Saturday, not going and enjoying the summer on a Sunday, but sitting in a coffee shop to write. But that really changed who I am as a person. It changed me, my outlook on goal setting business, but also 
my business is totally different. Like I said at the beginning, you and I would not be having this conversation if I did not make that decision. And thanks to the 10X role. Well, I was going to say, one of the things I was going to mention to you is, is that's one of the books that, uh, not this year, but last year that I read. And I would say it was my, the best book I read last year in 2017. It definitely helped change my mindset on goal setting and, and going, you know, bigger and better and, and just being able to kind of think bigger than yourself. And so I would definitely second that book and say the 10X Roll is a good read. I actually always recommend our listeners to pick it up in the Audible format so you can actually listen to it because I don't know if you ever listened to his 10X Rule um, Audible segments, but he actually does a lot of ad-libbing in there as well. And he's just hilarious just the way he does things. But I would definitely second that. I think what you're basically talking about in your platform is, is it's kind of like a Wikipedia for career you know, advice, correct? Yeah, exactly. And think of that as like... Um... I think a good analogy I would give you is if you wanted to find news, you would go to Huffington Post. And same way, if you want to go for, let's say you want to find tech advice, people, what's happening in the world of startups, people go to TechCrunch. And people want to know what's happening in the world of business, they go to Business Insider. I want um, career advice to be careermetis.com. And so how do you monetize that kind of a website? Is it primarily through advertisements or what do you actually do to you know, drive revenue in that kind of a business? I would say because the content is free for most individuals, it is uh, it is advertising, whether it's sponsored posts or banner ads, like the traditional ads. But that's just the beginning. One of the next phases of monetization that I'm working on right now is launching a job board. So let's say people are coming to the site to learn what they could do in terms of in a situation where they have to look for a job or they want to change their careers. But uh, in order to search for a job, they have to go to another site. So the next phase, I want to start monetizing by having job ads. Over the next few years in terms of monetization, so job boards would be the next phase. Having live events, job fairs for each individual cities. Also having a coaching platform. People reach out to me saying, hey, could you help me with this resume? And that is something I do not enjoy. I don't, I'm not a career coach. People don't, <laughs> don't like coaching. But, you know, I know a lot of people and I know a lot of people looking for help so I can connect that and build a marketplace. So I do have a lot of plans for the next five years. And one of the things I'm really happy is about because there's so much to do and what the field itself is evergreen, meaning 10 years from now, let's say even the world of jobs change, there'll still be people looking to hire and people looking for jobs. So I'm optimistic about where this can go in the future. Nisar, talk a little bit about your strategy that you have for making difficult decisions. How do you approach those decisions and come to a decision when you're faced with it? So one of the things I do, whenever I have to make a decision, I, I try to step away, meaning I try to leave where I'm sitting, like working from, maybe I'm working from home every day, so I go to a coffee shop, or let's say I've always been working there. Every three to four months, I take a trip outside the city. I go somewhere where I set my goals for the next three months. I plan. And at that point, I make those decisions. So for me, that process has become easy because during that time, if something changes, I set that time. I use those three-month intervals for planning and goal setting. And during those three months, I stick to what I decided on. It is sort of relieving because during that time, if I've come up with an idea, I put that down on a piece of paper. Or I actually, I have a place on my Google Drive where everything is saved. And when I go to my next round of planning, that's when I bring that up and see whether I need to work on this. If so, how can I launch this? How can I do this? I find that method to be very relieving because if I leave everything to be ad hoc or something, if I needed to make a decision every week, it would get in the way of me getting stuff done. All right, we're going to take a quick break and hear from one of our show sponsors. When we come back, we'll talk to Nithar about some of his favorites as they relate to business. Have you ever thought about investing in real estate, but find yourself so busy that you don't have time for it? Do you have FOMO, which is the fear of missing out? At HanfordCapital.com, we help investors with passive real estate investments that project better returns than traditional investment vehicles, such as the stock market. If you'd like to find out more about our passive real estate investments, visit HanfordCapital.com. That's H-A-N-D-F-O-R-D Capital.com. We will jump on a call with you to discuss your investment goals and to see if our investments are a good fit for you. 
This advertisement is not to be construed as an offer or recommendation to buy or sell a security. Visit HanfordCapital.com. All right, we are back, and we're going to be going through a series of quick questions and answers called the trifecta. Nazar, we're going to be talking to you about some of your favorites in business, and I want you to start us off with the first one, which is what is your most favorite technology that you use right now in business that helps make your life easier every day? So one of my favorite softwares that I use actually is an app on my phone, and it is called SwiftKey. I accidentally got introduced to it a few years ago when I bought my phone. It is actually an app, it's a keyboard app that replaces your Android or iPhone. And what I really love about it is, it is something called predictive, meaning as I type response, it it finds, it studies what I am going to write and it gives me suggestions. So actually I can, instead of me typing out an entire email, I can get that done in less than a minute. This has been really useful for me because every day I get pictures from people. Most of the time the pictures are the same about, they want to contribute and all, or they have a question and most of the questions are repeated. So instead of me writing the whole email or copying and pasting from another app, SwiftKey makes it so much easier. I have no idea how much time I've saved on that. The second thing I recently got introduced to was is a system called Ultra Working. It's not necessarily a software, it is a system. It's essentially a Google Sheet where you track how you get work done. We talked about goals, everybody has an idea how to set goals, how to plan, but how do you actually get work during that time when you're supposed to work? That's where ultra working comes into picture. Essentially, it's a modification of the Pomodoro technique where Pomodoro technique is 25 minutes of work, five minutes of break. In this case, it is 30 minutes of work and 10 minutes of break. But before you start, you're actually writing down what you're going to work on. And then you recon, after you're finishing it, you go back and What is really helpful is in those 30 minutes, there's no distraction, you're working. And I realize I get more done and I've achieved more because of that. What is a favorite quote that you've heard that's helped you as an entrepreneur? This usually changes from time to time. And I stick with my favorite quote for a time period. But one of my favorite quotes that I've recently used right now, and it's also on my Facebook cover. It's actually my Facebook cover image right now. It's, uh, It's by Malcolm X and it says, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. And that, when I first heard it, and actually heard it as I was listening to a video on YouTube, I, I think I was taking a walk. I had to stop and ponder because it hit me. It's one of those quotes that really hit me and had such a huge impact. And it is so true. And that's the reason I always look at any decisions I make, any actions I do. Sometimes I do things, I ask myself, is this even necessary? But I know if I do it today, when I arrive in the future, I'm a better equipped, equipped person, better equipped uh, entrepreneur, and so on. So the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. But Malcolm X is my favorite quote. And what is a book that you've read that you would recommend and that has helped you with your decision making or with your business in general? So I mentioned the 10x rule at the beginning, so I won't repeat that again. But one book that has really helped is uh, The 12 Week Year by Brian Moran. Essentially, It talks about goal setting. It breaks the idea of resolutions and long-term goal setting. Instead, you're setting up goals for every three months. And it has been a game changer for me. It has been a life-changing program for me. It's a very simple book, something you can read in a couple of days. But the 12-week year is, is more than a book. It's a great system. I would encourage anyone to look into it if you wanted to improve your productivity and your goal achievement. What is the next thing for you right now in your vision or dream bar, Nazar? So one of the things I do want to do, as I mentioned, I talked about the tactics of what I want to do with the business, adding a job board, a coaching marketplace, events in the future. What's on my mission board is to have a global organization because what I'm planning to work on is not a local, it's not like a retail or a restaurant, which is location-based. No matter which country you go, people are looking for jobs, want to look for jobs, people want to hire. So eventually I want to, grow the company to a point where in every city there is a fair or an event that is hosted through careermedis.com and eventually I'm able to impact not thousands but millions of individuals and companies. And how can the listeners reach out to you if they want to find out more information about you or you know, contact you after listening to the episode today? Yeah, I mean, the best way to uh, reach out to me is on LinkedIn. My full name is Nisar Ahmed. They can also send me an email, nisar at careermedis.com. So it's N-I-S-S-A-R at career, C 
T-A-R-E-R-M-E-T-I-S.com. Usually respond to most emails. And uh, those are the two best ways. Well, thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule to be with us today on the podcast. I wish you the very best and look forward to having you on a future podcast episode as you continue to grow as an entrepreneur. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Tough Decisions Network. Be sure to visit toughdecisions.net to gain access to show notes for this episode and to join our free weekly entrepreneur email where we will send you news about the latest technology for your business, inspiring quotes, and the latest books for entrepreneurs. That's toughdecisions.net.